In this episode of John's Arcade, we're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. That is right, in this episode, we're going back to my buddy Jay's Arcade. And let me tell you, man, he's got a crazy collection of uber rare games and classics. I mean, this, this place is awesome. And then we're gonna come back to the table and do some viewer mail. And actually, I'm gonna show you guys how I made the John's Arcade theme song in Pro Tools over there. And also, before we start, guys, I wanna tell you, May 29th and 30th, we are doing a John's Arcade Impossible Outsiders Tournament at Fun Spot. That's right, May 29th and 30th. It's John's Arcade, it's Arcade Impossible, it's Arcade Outsiders, and it's even Matt McCarthy from the Kill Screens. So guys, go to johnsarcade.com. I have all the details there at the top. Everything you need to know about the tournament, it's May 29th and 30th, 2015 at Fun Spot in Wares Beach, New Hampshire. All right, guys, let's get on with the show. Hey, guys, we are in the basement, and today we're going to do a John's Arcade on the road. That is right. In this video, we are going to revisit my buddy Jay. That's right. Do you guys remember last year we went to Jay's Arcade, and Jay has an amazing collection and you know what, his collection evolves over time just like mine. So I thought in today's video, we'll do a John's Arcade and go visit Jay's Arcade. And actually, this was a spontaneous trip, I have to tell you, okay? I, I got out of work the other day, and I knew that Jay was having people over, because he has these Arcade Wednesdays, most Wednesdays. He has people over, local people, we all hang out, play games, etc. And I got off work, and I'm like, you know what, I feel like going to Jay's tonight. So I did, and it was a spontaneous trip, and as a result, I didn't have my real camera with me, okay? So, I filmed this with my cell phone, but I felt it was important to document Jay's Arcade, so hopefully you guys don't mind the quality. It was a little dark down there, but I, I tried fixing it in post, and hopefully it all works out. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get in the car, and let's take a ride over to Jay's Arcade. All right, guys, we're here at Jay's. I hear he's having an arcade get together tonight. Housekeeping! Housekeeping! Jay? Hey, what's up? Jay! Welcome back. <laughs> what's How's up, going? man? I haven't been here in a while. Yeah, got some changes here. I, the you're, you're having an arcade get together, is yeah, that right? Yeah, we do an arcade Wednesday tonight. We do this every Wednesday night and have some local guys over. And we play Sweet. some games, fix some games, you know? So I see some new stuff right away this four player track and field cocktail, yep. which is awesome. Yeah, it's a fun, fun competitive game. Uh, you know, two players at a time compete against each other, just like regular, you know, upright track and field. Uh, but it can accommodate four. And then obviously the screen will. Right. Ro rotate. Yeah, it'll flip to the other side. Two players here, two players there. You got it. Yep. Didn't they make it like a pedestal too, so you yeah. can stand up? So this yeah. is like the sit-down setup. Yeah, you can raise it up with the pedestal. I didn't. Unfortunately, when I bought it, it didn't have a pedestal, but uh, it's still cool. Yeah, it's in pretty good shape. I need to do some restoration work. Did someone make a repro for yeah. this? Yeah, actually, uh, Phoenix Arcade uh, Darren uh, has a limited quantity of these. Oh, nice. I was able to pick them up before he ran out of them. Track and field's so fun. It gets the most play up here, hands down. Does it really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I I was like this close to getting rid of mine. I'm like, there's just no way. It. I can't do it. it. I'll regret it. Yeah, you will. I will. I it, totally will. This it's game fun. Is the most play every Wednesday night, hands down. That's awesome. Tapper, you had that before. Yeah, Tapper, I added. I used to have ice cold beer in here, and then I switched it out with the Tapper in. I, a good bar theme, you know, to go. With sure. This is bar. your bar, yeah. obviously, right here. Yeah. This is the bar room. And uh, nice setup. And, and then Warlord's cocktail. Yeah, Come on. So this is one of my grails. I finally got one, and. Um, you know, this is a good four-player game as well. So we alternate between track and field and warlords, keep going back and forth, and this gets a ton of play. So. Do, you, do you play for bucks? Uh, we've we've tried that a few times. It hasn't yeah. really worked out well. It doesn't work out well. Yeah, a lot of fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And here's your ice cold beer. Yeah. So this is just in the hanging out in the kitchen. Yeah. Until I find space. For Great it. shape. Thanks. Yeah. It's a good good game. What's up, guys? Hey. This is Quinn, my buddy Quinn. Hey, Quinn. You guys know Scoots, he has bees. 
Same old characters. Doug. Say hi. I'm Doug. Chris. Who's Doug? <laughs> I'm gonna say my name. <laughs> so what's up, guys? We're all hanging yeah. out. You guys are testing asteroids. It's not working though. It's not working. Yeah, it's just just getting. What's wrong? This is your kitchen the test bench. Like good fellas. Yeah. <laughs> Go get the papers. <laughs> yeah. It's just giving us a lot of garbage on the screen. Hi. <laughs> And, uh, yes, women do come to arcade ones. <laughs> once in a while. One. So yeah, that's not good. Anything. It's a sweet setup. We're gonna we're, we're gonna do my sixty one hundred here. You think? Yeah, whenever you're ready. Should we do that? Bring it down. We'll we should. It'll we'll be fun. Ready. Yeah. So you want to see the rest of the game? Sure. Now? It's not coming up. <laughs> it's down. Is it down? Hey, what's over here? I see some stuff. This is just the runoff. The runoff? Yeah. This is extra stuff. Space Sap Cocktail. Yeah. Dude, that thing's super cool, man. You have like all the Space Saps. You have the, the Cabaret, the full size, and the cocktail now. Right. Are you a Space Sap fan? It's it's a fun game. Have you ever played it before? Of course I have. It's a ton of fun. Yeah, I, I played it at Fun Spot and I, and I fell in love with it like instantly. Yeah. It's like such a reflex game. It's like Simon says to me. It is. Like, but yeah. You kind of get in the zone when you're playing it. There's got some good players too around. Really? Here. Local guys, really, really good at this game. Another Warlords cocktail. Really, yeah. This uh, this is another one that's gonna go for sale soon. I didn't restore it. I just repaired it. It wasn't long. It looks like it's in great shape. It's all original. Yeah, it's all original. I didn't do anything to this. Just repaired the board and the monitor. And you've got a spare centipede cabaret. That's actually an Irish uh, centipede cabaret. It is. Yeah. What makes it Irish? Um, well, the, what's different? The. the the bezel, uh, the colors here are different. We can compare it to the one I have downstairs. Yeah. These are bluish and red. Like, like less purple. colors almost. Yeah, on the uh, regular US version. And the marquee is, is like more pink. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's an Irish one, huh? I didn't know there was an Irish cabaret. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. It, it's and very, very close to the uh, see other here, one. But they have uh, the currency on it's different too. They don't. Oh, interesting. It's like one pound or something yeah, whatever, whatever the irish people pay use, yeah. potatoes maybe <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm the corn beef upstairs. what do you think they use <laughs> so the pins are on this side i think you may have seen uh, oh there's some overflow here so here's yeah. the space app upright we were just talking about you got a nice stargate cabaret stargate cabaret i really dig that dude yeah i do it's a fun cabaret I like the little Williams cabarets. You don't see them that often. No. Not yeah. nearly as much as the uh, Midway ones. Yeah, Robotron's probably the hardest one to come across. And here's uh, the full-size space app. Right. Yeah. Which is just a crazy game. It's I fun. mean, for an older game, it's a pretty badass cabinet. Yeah. It's cool graphics on the side. The side art is really nice. It's got this crazy circuit kind of like, you know, uh, look to it. You know, right. Circuit board kind of thing going on. Sweet. Uh, yep. And here's your pins. Yeah. Revenge uh, from Mars. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, these are the previous videos. Yep, Getaway. Uh, Getaway. Uh, What's new since last time I was here? I think Star Trek. Star Trek? Trek? Yeah. Who done it? Terminator 2. And it's Star Trek. And you put the color DMD in there. Yeah, the color DMD adds quite a bit to it. That's it's awesome. Fun. Yep. And uh, everything's been LED. Which though. pin is your favorite? Uh, right now, Getaway is my favorite. Getaway? Yeah, really? I like Getaway a lot. It's totally cool, though. This yeah. this sequel to High Speed, and yeah. they kind of really. Kind of ramped ton, it up. <laughs> yeah, it gets a ton of play. This is by far the most played pin in my whole collection. Sweet. All right, let's go over here. So again, a Satan's Hollow mini just kind of hanging out. Yeah, it needs to be repaired. You having a good game? Uh, looks all professional. It's a J Rock guy in the Multi Williams. Yeah, this is J Rock Ward um, running on this Multi Williams. And, uh, now, Jay, you took my uh, Multi Williams in our trade. I did. But What's going not, on with that? This is not the same one. So that was, uh, bubbles cabinet. I'm going to restore that to original bubbles. Right, right. Um, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Say hi, Brendan. I'll play some space app for you. <laughs> you want to play yeah. some space app? Brendan is the local space app expert. Is he really? He's good at it. Yeah. So this, I think most of this has stayed the same. You've seen Spy Hunter. Yep. Disatron. Uh, space Fairy is down while I repair. Uh, the monitor chassis. Taxcan is new though, so I don't Taxcan's know. super cool, man. Yeah, Taxcan's really fun. Another rare Sega vector game. You do not see this game hardly ever. I've never seen one before. Show me how it plays. Yeah, sure. Is it's it like, like, a, like a Galaga type deal? Or? Yeah, it's a little bit like Gapless or, and Galaga 3. And so the controls are a spinner. Yeah, it has a spinner, which you never see in a vector game. Right. Uh, well, it's not just, well, yeah. <laughs> 
and Star Trek. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, it's, it's a lot like Galaga uh, and Gapless, um, where you have like multiple fighters uh, that are you know that you can have on your side, and then as you lose them, um, you can gain them back. Right, by, you got like empty slots now. Yeah, and you can you can you're, you're given a few extras to begin with, and then you can capture them as you're flying, like these guys right here. When they fall down, you can capture them and, and regain your fighter, you know, allies. Uh, wow. Anyway, yeah, so I'll try to capture one this time. You're going to line it up with where my the little green arrow is there. There you go. And now it actually changes and goes like in a 3D mode. Oh, that's and cool, it dude. it flies into the screen. So now you're playing a different aspect ratio. Kind of it's of funny. It doesn't... It, it's a vector game, but it doesn't really feel like it. No, not at all. That's... It's cool. Yeah. You never think it's a vector, like, shooter. You don't see vector shooters ever. Like, Except yeah. for, like, the major Havoc shooter level. Yeah. Which is, like, three seconds in the game. Yeah. And so then, uh... Yeah, so this is pretty much, you can just keep adding your guys back as you recover them. And, uh, you know, Tax Can's a hard game to keep working because it's a Sega Vector, so this one... Because the monitor is really flaky, right? The monitor, the card cage, everything about these games, the power supplies, they're all kind of flaky. But, uh, That's cool, dude. Not my best game ever, but... Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of the best Sega Vectors, I think. And see if I can capture one of these guys. Do you have all the Sega Vectors now? Uh, I'm missing. Um, oh, dude, look at that! Yeah, this is pretty, just like inner stage kind of part that you could going through a tunnel. Yeah, that's a really cool effect. Yeah, yeah, they did a good job with this game. Oh we, yeah, <laughs> and then you go back to the upright, sure, you know, vertical and it's kind of rinse and repeat. Yeah, exactly, different formation, and that's it. So awesome. Anyway, so yeah, that's that. And um, this is my old Star Wars, guys. Yeah, it's a, now it's a here. It is. Game. Yeah. So you have Empire Strike because I had I had the ESP kit in there. Yeah, so I'm running Empire Strikes Back. Do you now. run Empire more than Star Wars? All the time. It's default set to Empire. Are you serious? Yeah, I like Empire Strikes Back better than. Oh, I see, Star I did it. I always had it on Star Wars. Yeah. No, I like it. <laughs> Um, I, yeah. I mildly miss this. You got some auto play down uh -huh. here. But you have a 720 and a dedicated robot. I do, I do. In, in place of this. <laughs> How can you go wrong? I think you got the better end of that deal. But. I, I had to do a lot of work on the 720. Yeah. I have like a multi part three star turn, series it if you want to see it. Game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? But, the um, tube swap and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was you decided to do that, not me. No, the monitor died. Yeah. Pole position cockpit. I'm actually very jealous of that. I wish I had room for this. Mm. You should make room. I mean, pull position rules. Yeah, top three game. Top three. And you have a major Havoc conversion. I have the one in the Tempest. You have the one in the Space Duel. That's right. Right? Yep, the Space Duel conversion. Um, Lit track ball. Yep. This is new Peter Packrat. Right? I don't remember that. Atari System 1, right? Yeah, Peter Packrat. Right? I used to have Marble Madness in here, I think, last time. Can you play uh, a little bit of that? Yeah, I'd, sure. I'd love to see that. I've, yeah. I've tried this game in MAME like a long time ago. It's yeah. a crazy little game. Yeah, you're just gonna go collect like some of the uh, different. Look at the joystick. Uh, That's cool. So this was sold as a kit, right? To right. convert like road blasters and stuff like that. Correct. Road blasters, Indiana Jones, uh, Marble, Marble Madness, Madness. Yeah. And then uh, what was the other one? I think I'm missing one. I like the little characters. What are you supposed yeah. to do in it? Uh, you just want to collect all these bottles that are kind of hanging around, and uh, then you go to the next stage. So I just, you know, just kind of. It's a cute little platformer. Yeah, no, it's not a bad game. Oops. And you can throw these things. And then you can actually use that fly to kind of fly around the stage. But oh, really? Yeah. Um, so he's like a little rat? Yeah. And so now I'm just going to return back to the nest there. I think I can grab onto that. Dude, this game is cool, man. I love cute little can... stupid games like this. Yeah. You can go through the tubes and stuff like that. So, so I think, what can uh, you do? Jump or fire? Or? Uh, you just throw. Yeah, you can throw and you can jump with this button here. So this okay. will throw the whatever weapon and then uh, you can... Here, so, uh, so yeah, you just kind of jump around and collect like you know uh, all the bottles. It's like and, Goonies or something. Yeah, this stage is a lot like Goonies. And then I think you can, yeah. See so, you now I can use that guy to fly around. I might, oh, yeah. let's see if I can. I don't know how I'm gonna get back up here. I'm not really good at this game. Uh, yeah, so I can shoot that guy, and then I can jump on him. Uh, oh, he ate. Yeah, he, he hit me. You. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Oops. Anyway, so yeah. That's uh, Peter Packrat. Um, and then Dragon's Lair 2. We yeah. saw that last time we were here. It was in the garage, I think it was I think. in the garage, and yeah, now it's actually down in the basement. It's, so how do you like it? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't get as much play as I'd hoped. Really? Know? Yeah, so in my arcade, if games don't get played, like, they, on they leave. nights, they, they get out. So this game's probably going to leave soon. Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, I picked up a... Um, uh, Three-player Rampart. And oh, I that's think, an awesome I think game. That's gonna come down and Dude, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so Space App we've kind of beat to death, but here's a Space Cap Cabaret. We finally got this up and running. 
this had multiple issues, board issues and monitor issues, and now it's finally all back together. So. I love it. It's, uh, yeah, really, really fun game. Yeah, and, play uh, it for a second. Yeah. It's, it's like this little Twitch game. Sure. And yeah. the controls are up, down, left, right, and a fire. Yeah, and it just gets harder and progressively harder as you play it, but right now it's kind of easy because I'm on the first stage, but you just want to, wherever you see the enemy, you just want to fire, and, uh, and that's And it the, gets faster and faster yeah, and faster, you can see and eventually getting, you're just like, kind of like in the zone. Yeah, exactly. It's already starting to get fast, you can see. Crazy. It'd be good, like, iPhone game. Yeah. Yeah, it is popular down here. A lot of people like it, so. And then you gotta pull out. You must love it. You have the cocktail, the upright, and the cabaret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of cabarets, check out this. This is a Neo Geo Mini, which normally is much shorter. You added, like, a base to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm exactly. sorry for the poor light. The... Yeah. It's dark down here. Uh, so, yeah, I added uh, a base to boost it up because it was a little too short, you know, like yeah. most cabarets are, are, you know, a height where you can play them, but the Neo Geo is more of like a, a mini or a kid height, and you really couldn't, you couldn't right. really play it without sitting down. So it's I cool. added a little base to the bottom my friend built, and, and now it's the right height. You have Nightmare um, in the Dark in here, and Metal Slug X. Yeah, I actually have like a four slot in here, so I'm running... Oh, you, you know, are? Yeah, I'm running four games that are just the two. I so see. Aero Fighters 2, and then I think this might be Metal Slug, and then, um, and then, um, I forget what this game is, but anyway. Friends of Mad Man. Yeah. Look at him! <laughs> Alright, so here's your cabaret row. You guys can see this. Jay has a lot of cabarets. A lot of them were here last time, right? So we have the Tron. Yep. yep Miss Pack Cabaret. Yep. It's kind of dark, guys. I'm sorry. The Galaga. Gorf Mini. Omega Race Mini. Donkey Kong Mini. That one you're selling me, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> right Asteroids Deluxe. Yep. Battle Zone, which I like. I think that's a cool cabaret. Missile Command. Dig Dug. I love the Dig Dug cabaret. That game makes me angry now, though. Yeah. It's just so repetitive. Yeah, it is. Like, I loved it so much when I was a kid. And here's a centipede cabaret. If you guys can see, the colors are a little richer compared to the Irish one you had upstairs. Yeah, there's all more purple in this one. Tempest cabaret back in the corner. Here's your gyrus. Yeah, that's leaving soon. It is? Yeah. Yeah, mine might be too. <laughs> <laughs> here's another R-Type. You just took the R-Type back that, that we made in that train. Right, right. Yeah, that's going to become an R-Type 2. So R-Type was my first game, and then R-Type 2 is like a really hard-to-find, rare sequel to the... So you'll you have R-Type 1 and 2 next Correct. to each other? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Play Choice 10, yep. Single Monitor, which I like a lot. Yeah. Uh, Cubert, you have the... Uh, it said Cubert Cubes. Yeah, I put the multi gate in this, so right okay. now I'm running Cubes, and uh, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Gotcha. And, uh, it gets a lot of play. People like Cubes. Um, Mad Planets, Yeah. one of my faves. Reactor, another awesome Gottlieb game. Yeah. And you just got the Outrun Cabaret. That wasn't here last time. Yeah, that's new. Um, it's going to go in the Cabaret row eventually. I just got it stuck in here for now. But, it looks um, good there, actually. Yeah. yeah it no, does. It, it looks, looks natural. It's actually bigger than like a regular Cabaret, so yeah. it's kind of yeah. like a, in, in between like a medium. Yeah. It looks like a real arcade. You know, the Sprint 2, the Outrun, the Reactor. I like yeah. it. I dig it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's fun to mix stuff up. Yeah. Super Sprint. Three-player. Dri awesome driving game and video pinball is just uber cool. Yeah, we we looked at it la the last time we were here. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a rare Atari piece. You don't see. Yeah, it's just a really cool effect. Yeah. Sweet. And then Berserk uh, at the end. Oh yeah, is that new? That's new. Yeah. It's in nice shape. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's running the J Rock Berserk frenzy. Oh, it is. Uh, so but, how do you switch uh, games? Uh, yeah. So if you just hit, uh, I think it's these two together. Uh, Go back to the menu and then you can switch between. Okay. So there's Berserk, then there's like. So this is a J Rock board. J Rock, you know, made like the multi Williams. He did a multi uh, Got, uh, Gottlieb Milestar board. Mil is it Milestar or Milstar? Uh, I think I think it's Milestar. I call it Milestar. Yeah. Um, so this has Berserk and Frenzy. I kind of want to get that board and throw it in my Jamma cabinet. Yeah, you It'd be kind of fun to play that game. Yeah, it's a fun game. Frenzy, I don't play too much. Uh, I'm more of a Berserk Is it harder? Guy. Yeah, I, I think it's. To me, it's a lot harder. But, yeah. yeah. I like Berserk. Well, cool, so, Jay. Yeah. Well, That's thanks it. for the update. Anytime, John. Thanks for coming down. <laughs> Arcade Wednesdays, anytime you're in the All right, town. well, of course. Come on by. <laughs> I kind of missed my Dissatron seeing that. Yeah.
Come on, listen to that game. I, I know, uh, it's awesome. I oh mean, yeah, I picked this up too, by the way. This is, uh... What's that? I haven't installed it yet, but I don't know. Um, for the guys, people who squawk have Squawk and Talk? Yeah, this is Squawk and Talk. Yeah. That's in the environmental disc of Tron. This yeah. the voice to, to uh, Sark, you know. Uh, so I'm going to install this pretty soon and uh, basically add some voice to Wait, my... is this an aftermarket? Is this modern? Uh, no, this is the real, this is the original Squawk and Talk. Oh, it is? Okay. And, uh, Scott Maggie, I think his name is there, do the um, all the wiring and he tested the board for me. So I'm going to install this into my upright disc of Tron. And oh, nice. It, it speech, so. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, I know Jedi Dennis did that. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so next time you come down, maybe it'll have speech. So. That would be sweet. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the environmental, the full size Citron had speech, but the upright, for whatever reason, they didn't put that in right. there. Right. So, yeah. All right, Jay. Well, oh, we have an iRobot here. What? Oh yeah, yeah. It's buried in the corner. It's hiding out there. Yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. Well, thanks for the arcade update. Anytime, John. Just coming down. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna go back to the basement. All right, guys. Bye. 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 I'm See done. you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Back to the basement. Bye, John. Bye guys. Bye, John. See you, Quinn. Bye, Tim. See you, John. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I like to christen my series, the last video in all my restores, I like to be a gameplay video. And it always seems like so, like, like once the game's down here, it's hard for me to go back and do a video of just a gameplay. To me, it just seems so boring, because we spent so much time getting the game ready and all that. But if, if you guys want me to, I can do a, a Pac-Man gameplay video. I am not good, though. I really tried getting good at that game, learning the patterns. I am not a good Pac-Man player. And as far as the back doors in the garage, I actually do have a, a, a Miss Pac-Man or Galaga back door that has the bubble. And I was going to use that bubble to make a new back door, but I never did. And then I also have another bubble just loose by itself that I will use. So, I don't know. Eventually, we'll do that. I, I guess, you know what? It's so far from my mind because, like I said, the game's down here. It's up against the wall. I never see that back. I, I don't even know the back door is missing, to be honest. So... I don't know, Ian. We'll see. At the very least, we'll maybe do a gameplay video if you guys want me to. Maybe a midweek video. But I don't know if we'll we'll revisit uh, the back door. We'll see. Uh, the next one here is from Timothy Van DeMark. Uh, hi, hey, John. Uh, this is my first time emailing you. I've commented before on a vid or two, but I have a couple of questions. I'm about to buy my first game for restoring. Congratulations. It is a Mortal Kombat 2 that was put into a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cabinet, and I plan on bringing it back to teen, te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I've looked up most of what I need to do the job. I haven't looked inside the cabinet, but I know it's in working condition, but mainly I was wondering if you have any tips on how to remove paint off of the vinyl without damaging it. I'm not sure what kind of paint was used, but I'd be happy if I can remove that paint to see what the vinyl looks like. And I was also wondering if you could recommend a site for the control panel overlay and the marquee. I've already also found a reproduction control panel replacement wood piece. Uh, but anyway, sorry about the long email. Yours truly, Timothy Vandermark. Uh, okay, Timothy, so uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has full site art that's printed. And it's got April O'Neil on it and some kind of live action looking turtles and all that. And yeah, it sounds like someone painted the cabinet black or something, right? And you don't see the artwork and you want to get the, the paint off so you can see the original artwork. Well, it's hit or miss, okay? If, if you're lucky, they used latex paint, okay? And if they did, it's going to come off pretty easily, okay? If they use oil-based paint, it's not going to come off easily. But if they use latex... You could probably use citrus strip. Okay, Cit uh, I've used citrus strip in my videos before. It's like a gel, it's orange, it smells, it's a citric acid, right? And you can put it on the cabinet, let it sit for a few minutes, and then, and then with a plastic scraper, try to get the old paint off. Now you gotta be very, very careful with this stuff because if you leave it on too long, it'll start eating up the artwork underneath the paint, okay? And I went through this with my Time Pilot a long time ago. Before I had the Time Pilot that I did have down here, I had another one that was painted black. And I tried using citrus strip to get the, pa the paint off to reveal the artwork. Well, the citrus strip was not taking the paint off at all, okay? And so I had to leave the, uh, the paint on there for a long, uh, the citrus strip on there for a long time. And eventually it started eating up the artwork. It started removing the paint from the artwork and it was, it was a failure, okay? But I've seen guys do this before. I saw a guy in Claw that had a killer instinct and he used citrus strip and it all came off and it was like brand new. So it all depends on the paint, but really I would do a little small section first, okay? Maybe towards the back and do a test section, maybe a, a couple inches by a couple inches, put, put the cabinet on its side, put some citrus strip on there, let it sit for five minutes, three minutes, just experiment with it, see what it takes to get rid of the paint. Because the longer you, you leave the citrus strip on there, the more likely it is gonna, it's gonna remove the artwork, you know? It's gonna remove the printing on the artwork vinyl. So experiment with citrus strip. Um, as far as like uh, the control panel overlay, I know that Rich uh, at this old game did do a reproduction run of it. And if you go on his website, uh, it says if you're interested, email or call, and maybe he'll do another run. And I'm not sure if he's doing those print on demand or what, but I, I do think that this old game is going to be your best bet. It's going to be the best quality. So I would give Rich a call on his website. Go to thisoldgame.com. There's a phone number on there. If you go to the Turtles control panel overlay, there's a phone number even. Give him a call or shoot him an email. If that turns into a dead end, I mean, you might want to go to Game On Graphics. It's probably going to be your second best choice as far as like digital printing. I, I, I think a lot of people have done that at Game On Graphics. So, all right. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, the next one here is from Dan Keller. Hi, John. I'd love to hear about what you used to make the John's Arcade theme song. When I first started watching your videos, I hated it. <laughs> 
but your videos over time really made me hooked on it and it just fits it just fits i love the fact that you get in front of the camera for the viewer mails and i really enjoy the viewer mail part of your videos and arcade outsiders is just the best makes me laugh so hard sometimes love it and love the new microphone no more noise and it sounds great all right, Dan, so you're asking how I made the John's Arcade theme song. Well, let me show you guys. Let's go over here. <laughs> so I'm all set up. Let's, let's go to my computer. And so the John's Arcade theme song is a song that I made. I made it myself. I made it in Pro Tools with my synths and a vocoder and my micro Korg, which is right here. And I have the Pro Tools session up on the computer here. And I'll just kind of show you guys. Now, I, I recorded this like three years ago and I went through all my files and I couldn't really find like all the sessions. I found this session right here and I don't remember which synths I used to be honest. I, I believe I use Remedy which is a really good synth, but my MIDI tracks don't seem to be here, and I don't know why. And, I, you know, I have a hard drive with tons and tons and tons of sessions. And so this is a session I found, but it's got all of the synth tracks dumped. Uh, they're bounced, meaning that they're not uh, live MIDI tracks. So I bounced them out of the synth um, and then used this for mixing. I do know that I used the Microcorg uh, right here, which is a hardware synth. I used this for the John's Arcade, like the, uh, the vocoder part. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second here. So like here, let me play the, the John's arcade vocoder part, okay? So I did this with my microcorg, and it's me, it's me saying John's arcade, by the way. I'm saying John's arcade basically through this synth, because a vocoder, okay, this mode right here, you put it on vocoder, and then basically you just hit the keys you want. So if I want if I want it to be in C, and then I plug a microphone into here, and then I say what I want, and it turns it into that robot voice in the key of C, okay? And so here, you can see, right here, here's how the vocoder track sounds. Let me just play it. So that's just the track by itself. So that was me through a microphone, through this synth. Hear it? Let's hear it again. So that's how I did that part. That's me saying John's Arcade. And then, let's see, I'll, I'll play you guys some of the other synths. I, I'm pretty sure I use Remedy to record these parts. Um, so this is one of the synths here. And then I added uh, this other synth right here. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that synth is uh, in Remedy. And I think this bass line might be through the microcord. So that's with the, uh, the bass line and that other synth. And then for the kick drum, which is right here, I basically just took... Th this is actually a kick drum that I use all the time on... Uh, this is all over the kill screen CD. This kick right here. This, this kick I actually call the kill screens kick. And like I said, I use this thing, this same kick on science fiction movie, that song science fiction movie, and it's it's on a lot of the songs uh, on uh, the, the kill screen science fiction movie album. And it's like heavily compressed, it has a lot of noise. Listen to that. It's really not a good sound. And basically I just kind of came in here and I just kind of just put the kicks on the timeline. And then when I want a little fill, I'll like right there, dun, 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 I'll duplicate it. So you can see that, and I just manually laid that out, okay? And then over the kick, I then put some hats, right here, some hi-hats, which is this track right here. And again, I'm manually doing all those hi-hats. I'm just chopping them up and putting them on the line. And then I guess, you know, when you start adding in the other voices here, um, this, this, this song is really only like four tracks for the music. The kick, the hi-hats, this synth, and then this other synth right here. That's it, it's four tracks. And then I add in the vocoder in the beginning. And there you go. <laughs> That's how I recorded it. Pretty cool, right? John's Arcade. And then I, I was actually going through some of the older sessions, because I have some backups of the sessions here. If I go to session file backups. So some of the earlier ones, which is like this one right here,
because Pro Tools like automatically saves the project as you're working on it. And you can kind of hear how the vocoder. <laughs> So that was me kind of screwing around with the vocoder in the beginning. Not really sure how I was going to make it work. Not as cool, right? So you can see that was an earlier session in the project. Um, let's go to like one like around six or so. Let's see how this one sounds. So I, I, I took a lot of time. It took me a, a bunch of tries to really get that vocoder sound down. So here's the vocoder. That sounds different, right? That sounds totally different. So you can see how the vocoder sound kind of evolved. <laughs> Doesn't sound nearly as cool. And then when I did John's Kitchen, which I, I think there's something called John's Kitchen. I I've never really heard of it. Uh, but anyway, when I did the John's Kitchen theme song, I basically reopened this session and then just re-recorded uh, the vocoder part, but I did it kind of cheesy and purposely not robotic. John's kid. <laughs> so I just kind of came in here and added those, but I purposely didn't do it vocoder because I didn't want it to be robotic for the John's Kitchen theme. John's Kitchen. <laughs> John's Kitchen. So yeah, that's how I did it. I did it all Pro Tools. I used the Micro Korg and some soft synths. I'm 99% I'm positive that I use Remedy. Um, Remedy is a great free synthesizer. It's all over the Kill Screens album. And actually, uh, I did that in Pro Tools 9, which is a 32-bit application. And when I upgraded to Pro Tools 11, I lost my ability to use Remedy because I can't. Because um, Remedy runs in 32-bit, and, and the new Pro Tools is 64-bit, and all the plugins are a new format. So, But anyway, if you guys use, if you fool around with stuff like GarageBand and, and all that, you can download that Remedy synthesizer. It's actually really good. And uh, I used that synth all over the Kill Screens album. All over. And I, I'm 99% positive I used it on the theme song for that one track. And then I used the micro cork for the bass line. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, so, all right, guys, you know, that's going to do with this video. I don't know if this is the Sunday video. I don't know what this is. I wanted to get this out, though, because I love Jay's Arcade, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm going to be releasing some videos, like, on Sunday and Monday. I, I don't know. There's going to be a bunch of stuff coming out. We had we didn't get to the garage this weekend. It's, it's Saturday night here, but we're going to be getting there soon. Um, it, the weather actually was kind of cold this weekend, so we'll see. We'll be we'll be getting all that. So and, and again, guys, you know May 29th and 30th, we're doing that Fun Spot tournament. Uh, it's John's Arcade Impossible Outsiders Brofest 2015. Go to johnsarcade.com for all of the details. Everything is there. Everything you need to know about the tournaments at johnsarcade.com. First post, read about it. I really hope I see you guys at that tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. And don't worry if you're not a good player. So. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Check out Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com and ArcadeOutsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. And, and by the way, guys, you know, if you do like my videos, consider supporting me. There is a support button on the homepage at YouTube.com slash BLKDOG7. Go ahead. If you want to kick in a few shekels and, and throw some love and support my way, go ahead and click that support button at YouTube.com slash BLKDOG7. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Later, and bye!